Good evening. Good evening. How are you feeling today? Um, I'm okay. Well, just tighter. The traffic right. was horrible. So, and I'm 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 already done my dinner. So, <laughs> but it's okay. Okay, we are just having like two more sessions, almost one, to end this course. So you will have some a couple of days to to rest. Because you're yeah. not going to have this, this session at this time. So you are going to rest some days because the next month, I think you are going to continue with, with the other course, I guess. Yeah. What about you? How was your day? How is the it weather was, there? Um, right now, it's not raining. That is something good for this moment uh, because I think the, the internet connection is working well. But in the afternoon, it was raining really, really hard. It was kind of terrifying because it was really yeah. kind of <laughs> Same hard. Same here. That's, that's why the traffic was uh, awful. No, and I live just the 25 minutes from my work. And I've been uh, seven, in, seven and a half in my house. It's the most uh, late that I can be. But today I was arriving to my house at 8 p.m. Wow. It was yeah. complicated. Complicated. And I was free from 6 p.m. Wow. It was so Imagine long. two hours waiting to be in my house was um, a hard day and, and that's point, right? Yeah, you, you like to travel, but not in that case because it's like very stressful, I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, here in, in, in the Sulatan it was raining hard, but it was not like complicated like that. Uh, people like uh, wait for a long time to uh, the rain stop, but in this case, in in that place, it's, it's a really complicated. What you have that kind of of things, but here it was like raining really really hard, but the traffic was kind of light because of the people was waiting for the the, the rain to stop because uh, there are some uh, places in which you cannot access because of the water and all of that thing. So in, in that uh, case, yeah. it's complicated. Mm -hmm. I know. <clears throat> yeah, but we don't have anything else to do. We need just, to live with it. Just to practice well. <sighs> what happened? <laughs> in this case, it's not the connection, it's me moving. Uh, the device, and I, I don't oh. know. I, I like okay. moving and, and not working. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, we are going, no problem. We are going to I was, I was telling you that I, I really okay. enjoy to um, practice. I mean, uh, only, only if I'm the people that think that only if you do something, mm -hmm. you are gonna learn, right? Because um, most of the people think that if they have a, a mistake, as uh, someone can um, be um, kidding from the mistake, but it's the way that we really can speak or learn to speak because if you don't know how you are wrong, you're never gonna know when you are right. So, of course. Uh, just, yeah. 
Yeah, in, in that uh, kind of uh, things, uh, when I was like uh, studying uh, the career, uh, someone said that one of the things that we do during our life is to feel uh, bad with all the things that we are doing. And English is one of the of those things that we think uh, when we are talking, uh, we are really, really bad and we feel like uh, we don't deserve to talk that uh, language because we are making mistakes, we are not talking properly, and we have a different pronunciation. But if you can see, we have different pronunciation throughout the, the world. Uh, we have people that talk in, in, in a correct English, but with a different kind of pronunciation, and that's okay because they are communicating something, but it's not sound yes. the same as we are speaking. <clears throat> and in this case, we are learning English from um, a country in which all the people is spoken in Spanish. And it is kind of hard because you are listening to that uh, um, native language and you need to communicate with others with that native language and you are not practicing enough to have that kind of, um, pronunciation that you want. There are many people that have that kind of uh, pronunciation that is very clear and perfect for us, but it's something kind of a, a strange, we can say it like that, but it's complicated uh, living in a, a space in which all the people is talking in Spanish. And someone said in that time, we need to, to talk with other people in English if we want to uh, feel better talking in public, because in some cases we know how to speak, but we stop that uh, that thing and we don't want to talk in English because we think- Just Because that, you're afraid about- No, of uh, If you're gonna make a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, Hi, and, Matias. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Matias, uh, I know uh, Matias, and I know that he can understand all the things that we are saying, and he can speak very well too. Yes, and, and, and that and reason, I think. Uh -huh. In some cases, we are listening to someone else talking, and we say, "Oh, that's pretty easy to understand." But in some cases, we say, "But I don't want to talk with that person because." I will say something that is not correct, but if you can see in the United States, it's completely different because they talk and they communicate and it is not necessary to have all the structure that we are using in this moment because there are no yeah. learning grammar in that country. <clears throat> They're just learning how to communicate. Like in Spanish, we in some cases, we are not going to use all the structures that we are learning in grammar, that we are communicating and we are creating that process. But uh, like right now, we are like not uh, really, really um, feeling very well talking with other people because it's kind of complicated, but we need to change that and to think that our English is obviously different from the others, but we have the possibility to communicate with other people and they can understand the things that we are saying. And that's the important part of the process. But don't feel nervous when you talk with uh, someone else because you know that maybe you are going to make a mistake, but you can change that. And if the person say, oh, he cannot talk in English, that person is not going to change because they think they are perfect and that is something really bad for the learning process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are going to continue with our process in this moment because I'm afraid I, I can touch this device and I, I will end the session again. But um, we are going to talk about quantifiers. Uh, yesterday we were talking about um, this one <laughs> that is the second part of the uh, present, I think. Yes, it is the present continuous. And now we are going to talk about the quantifiers. 
And we have two different types of um, categories in this case, because we have in English the parts of a speech. And they are, the, um, we can say the most important thing in the English process, because uh, we have categories of words that we are going to use to construct the information that we are giving to others. And in the part of a speech, we have nine elements that are very, very important when we are learning English. And we have the verbs that we know that they are the actions that someone performs. We have the noun. We have the adjective that we, we were talking about adjective in some time. We have the death reminder that is the one that we are going to explain something a little bit about the death reminder. And also we have adverbs. We have pronoun, preposition, conjunction, um, interjection that are part of uh, the speech because there are like uh, big groups that we can use to talk about in English and to create sentences. So in this case, we are going to talk about the, um, the quantifier. That is the topic that we are going to develop right now. And we are going to know what are the uh, quantifiers, how can we use it, and some example of those words that we are going to use. So, quantifiers. This is the topic. And it says that quantifiers are determiners that describe quantity in a noun phrase, and the, uh, they answer the question. How many and how much on a scale from none that is zero percent to all that is one hundred percent? And you know that in this case we are talking about countable and non or uncountable noun. Um, tenemos los nombres contables y los no contables que nosotros eh, ya sabemos un poco sobre ellos. Que los no contables, pues obviamente son los que no se pueden contar de una manera física sino que se miden de otra manera. Y los nombres contables son aquellos que obviamente tenemos algo físico que podemos contar. So in this case, how many, la pregunta how many, es para los nombres contables y how much es para los nombres no contables. Y si estamos hablando de eh, este tipo de eh, palabras, ¿verdad? Sus quantifiers, tenemos la escala que va desde el 0% hasta el 100% en la escala. Pero ya vamos a ver un cuadro que nos ayuda a representar lo que son los quantifiers. So, in this case, it says, quantifiers are determiners that describe quantity. Estamos hablando de cantidades. And they answer the question, how many and how much? And we have an scale from none that is 0% in this one, to all that is 100%. So in this case, we're not going to talk about needle. We are not going to talk about 70%, 50%, uh, 20%. We are going to um, talk about the complete number, 0% to 100%. So in this case, the determiners that is like um, the example that we have about the quantifiers, uh, it says that determiners are one of the nine parts of a speech that we say that we have these nine parts, and they are words like the, and, this, some, either, my, and whose. Those are the determiners. But in this case, it is not necessary to talk about determiners because we are talking about uh, the quantifiers. 
So we use some quantifiers only with countable noun, and we use some other quantifiers only with uncountable nouns. And we are going to see which ones we are going to use with countable nouns and with uncountable nouns. Okay, I think it will be better if I don't have that device um, connected to the computer because it's kind of hard to work with that. So I think I will have luck with the connection. So we're going to continue. Okay. So we are going to have a table in which we are going to see um, the examples of the words uh, that function as uh, quantifiers, and we are going to see in which cases uh, we are going to um, use that word if we have a countable noun or if we have uncountable nouns, and in which cases we are going to use it. And also, we are going to see the scale, the 100% and the 0% of these words. So let's see. I'm going to add the table in this case. I need this one, and we have three parts. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We have them examples. And we have here this scale. Then we have countable. Then we have uncountable and we have 100 percent it is uh, representing all of these words that we have here and the last one is the zero percent this one so we are going to write uh, the words that um has this kind of scale the 100 percent and we have all obviously every then we have a most, many, and in this case we have much for uncountable nouns. Then we have a sum. Here we have few. Then we have little. Then we have a few with. Few with. And in this one, we have list. Any. And for the zero percent, we have no. So those words that we have in that table are the quantifiers. So in that case, we know that in that case, we are going to use with elements that we can count or elements that we cannot count. So it says like all determiners, quantifiers come at the beginning of a noun or phrase. So they come in from of any adjective. So in this case, we need to know that in which place is a, um, the adjective. So in that case, we are going to buy the uh, quantifier in front of the adjective.
Okay, next one. Okay. In front of any adjective. Or adjective. So in the case, you know that in some uh, phrases we can use more than one adjective. So now we are going to see some examples of these words. And we have here, let me see, this one. And we have the list. Example number one, and it says, I want all the eggs and I want all the red wine. In this case, it's talking about the 100% of the scale. I want all the eggs and I want all the red wine. En este caso estamos hablando de que lo queremos todo, ¿verdad? No vamos a pedir dos, tres, un par, sino que en este caso estamos pidiendo todo de lo que hay en ese lugar. Por ejemplo, queremos todos los huevos que están ahí y queremos todo el vino rojo. Then we have example number two and it says, please give me every egg you have. In this case, we are using this one that is every. That is also talking about the 100% of the scale because we want all the things that they have, every age you have. Entonces, en el ejemplo 2, estamos diciendo, por favor, dame todos los huevos que tengas. En este caso, no estamos diciendo todo el conjunto, pero sí todos los que tiene en ese momento. Then we have example number three, and it says, who has the most eggs? Who has the most money? So we have the word most. Most and most. Most and most. Okay, and the last example is says, I have some eggs. Tengo algunos huevos. I have some eggs. So, then it says that we use quantifiers when we want to give someone information about the number of something. How much, uh, how many. In this case, we are going to use how much or how many, because in this case, we want to give information about the quantity of something. So in this case, it's talking about um, the number of things that we have. above the number of something. And we have how many or how much. How many and how much. So it says, sometimes we use a quantifier in the place of a determiner. In this case, we are going to use the quantifier. And we have some examples. And it says, most children start school at the age of five. En esta, en esta oración estamos diciendo, o sea, estamos hablando de cantidad. Eh, no estamos diciendo una cantidad exacta, pero estamos diciendo que la mayoría de los niños comienzan la escuela a la edad de cinco años. Estamos haciendo como... Eh, Una generalidad de la edad en la que los niños pueden empezar la escuela. 
So in that case, we say most children start school at the age of five. Then we have another example, and it says, we ate some bread and butter. And in this case, it is saying that uh, maybe they don't eat all the, the bread and butter that they have in that place, but they eat some of that food. Example number three, we saw lots of birds. How many birds? We don't know, because there are many, many birds in that place. Then we have quantifiers. With count and uncount nouns. Count and uncount nouns. Noun. Ninety six. I need uncount, not non count. So in this case, we um, say that we use these quantifiers with both count and uncount noun. En esta parte, cuando hablamos de los nombres contables y no contables, siempre hay excepciones. En este caso, estamos hablando de que estas palabras que vamos a, a ver a, en este momento se pueden utilizar con los dos, con los nombres contables y con los nombres no contables. Eh, sí es cierto que hay muchos que se utilizan de forma separada, uno solo para los no contables, otro solo para los contables, pero en este caso también tenemos excepciones de los que se usan para ambos. Um, we have these examples. Let me see. I need this one. We have all. We have some. We have more. A lot of. We have enough. No. Any. Most. Lots of. And we have less. So in this case, we can use um, this one for both count and non-count nouns. And we have some examples. We have lots of time. Then we have Joy has lots of friends. So in this case, when we're talking about time, this one is a uncount noun or non-count noun, because in that case, we are not going to count um, the seconds, the minutes, like um, we are counting money. In this case, we are um, having another um, way to count the hours. Uh, in, in that case, it's true the watch. And in the second one is a count noun because we are talking about people and we can count how many people are in that group of friends. Then we have number three. I can go out, I have got no money. That's really sad. I've got no money. And the last one it says, uh, there was a lot of food, but not drink. But no drink. 
Then we have, and it is the other part, it says, these more colloquial forms are also used with about count and uncle noun. In this case, uh, we're talking about some words that are not like uh, very used right now, but they are very common. So we can see these kind of words in some examples uh, when we are reading something. Forms are also used with both so these ones are like kind of old. And we have the examples. We have plenty of, let me change it. Plenty of, in Spanish, we can say that its translation is un montón de. Plenty of, un montón de. Then we have um, hips of. This is not like very common uh, when we are talking. And it says montones de. In this case, we are talking about something um, general. And in the first one, it's like one. But in the second one, it's uh, like something general. Then a lot of, a lot of, una carga de. Or we can say un montón de, but in this case, in, in, in the meaning or the translation is una carga de, and also we can have uh, this one that is a load up, that is the same, almost. And we have ton of, that in Spanish we can say eh, toneladas de. And we have some example with this word. We have number one, we have lots of time. Then we have Joey has plenty of friends. Then we have, there was heaps of food. Then we have some and many. There are other uh, common words that we can use. Um, in these quantifiers. So let me move to this and we have some and any. And we have that we don't normally use the quantifier some in a negative and interrogative sentences. We normally use any. In este caso, no vamos a utilizar normalmente el, el some cuando la eh, oración es negativa o cuando estamos utilizando o haciendo una pregunta. En este caso, normalmente nosotros usamos any. So, en, en este caso, cuando ya tenemos negativos y preguntas, no vamos a utilizar some. Vamos a utilizar any. In this case, we are going to mark some. In negative and interrogative sentence. We normally use any. 
we are going to mark any because in this case we need to keep this in mind. And we have some examples. We have number one, do you have any children? Second one, did you see any friends? Number three, in this case we have, we don't have any children. Tell me, Henry. Hello. Hello. Um, when we use a little, um, okay. has too many. Yes. Okay. Is. Mm -hmm. Es significa tiene dos significados, verdad? Pequeño y un poco. Mm -hmm. Lo utilizaré. Lo utilizaremos aquí. Little, un poco. Okay, in this case, a little. Mm, I think right now we are not going to use a little because um, we have just in quantifiers with uncount nouns. Cuando estamos utilizando los quantifiers para los nombres no contables, sí lo vamos a utilizar. Porque. Um, Ahí eh, entra el aliro y así como decía, eh, tiene los dos significados, en este caso es un poco. Eh, en esa parte sí lo vamos a utilizar, pero para los demás no. Solo para los eh, quantifiers con nombres no contables. Gracias. You're welcome. So, in a moment... Uh, we are going to end these examples. Vamos a terminar estos ejemplos y luego vamos a ver ese uso de alito que él mencionaba. Eh, porque ya vamos a pasar a la parte de los eh, quantifiers with eh, uncount nouns. So en esta parte sí lo vamos a ver. Eh, when we are talking about eh, countable and uncountable nouns, eh, we have a lot of words that we can use eh, with those um, nouns. And also we, we eh, can... Uh, read something about that expression uh, because in that case it's talking about uh, something that we cannot count. In that case we can say something about liquid. But we are going to see something about a little in a moment. So we were saying um, the other example number four, I didn't see any friends. And the last one, it says, we saw some lions at the zoo, but we didn't see any tigers. But we didn't. I mean, like, we didn't see any tigers. So it says that we can use some for offer and request. So in this case, we are talking about that. Um, when we are using negative a uh, sentence or questions, we are not going to use some, but you know that in some cases we have that um, like the exception for the rules and we have always 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 have one exception at least siempre vamos a encontrarnos con una excepción a la regla and in this case we are talking about that in some negative in question we are not going to use some but we can use it for offers and requests Entonces siempre vamos a tener estas excepciones y vamos a utilizar some, que ya nos especificaban arriba, que no se utiliza en las eh, oraciones negativas ni en las oraciones interrogativas. Pero sí lo podemos utilizar para ofertas y para eh, pedidos, in some cases. So we are going to have two examples about that information or that exception to, to the rule.
sum for offers and requests. And we have two examples of that information. And in number one, it says, would you like some tea? And we have the question mark. And the second one, it says, I want some apples, please. Okay. Then in this case, we are going to talk about the count, noun, and we have quantifiers with count nouns. And we have some quantifiers can be used only with count nouns. As some expressions so when we're talking about counts and non count nouns, we know that um, some expressions just can be used with a specific uh, part of these nouns. So it's the same with the quantifiers. Some quantifiers can be used only with count nouns. And we have here the words um, that we are going just to use with count nouns. And we have a series, many, but in this case, we can use not many also. Many. We have each. We have either. Many. Either. Few that we can use a few. We have a several, both, neither, and fewer. In this case, these are the ones that we are going to use with count nouns. And we have again more colloquial forms that are used only with count nouns. And we have three. In this case, we have just three. And we have a couple of. Then we have hundreds of. And the last one, thousands of. In this case, these are more colloquial forms. We can use just with the um, uh, count nouns, and we have also the examples. We have example number one, and it says, I will be back in a couple of minutes. And then we have, there were hundreds of people at the meeting. Uh, let me see. Oh, you're talking about a hint. In this case, we're not going to use it yet. In this case, we are not going to use a hint of. For the moment. I'm not talking about that. We are not going to use it at all. But in this case, we're not going to use a hint. Now, in this part, uh, we are going to talk about the uh, quantifiers with uncount nouns. And in this case, we can see the uh, expression a little.
quantifiers with uncount nouns. And we have three expressions that we can use for this category. And we have not much, in this case, not, it is not like, we are just going to use not much. In this case, it's much, but we can also use not much, a bit of, and we have a little. And we have some examples. We have example number one, and it says, would you like a little wine? And we have, could I have a bit of butter, please? So in this case, we can see um, that we are using uh, these expressions with uncount nouns. Like uh, a little, in this case, is when we are maybe talking about something that we are going to drink. But also we can use it with another expression, but in this case, we are going to use it for something that we are going to drink. And it says that these quantifiers are used particularly with abstract nouns and what are the abstract nouns we are going to see So we are going to have like a list of a abstract nouns that a, you can see that they are emotions or are talking about emotions, are talking about a state in, of uh, the person that is doing the action. It's talking about a concept. It also, it's talking about quality or an idea. So in that case, those are the abstract nouns. And I will send to you later, in a couple of minutes, I, I think, an image with um, a list of the most common abstract nouns that we can use in English that is talking about emotion, state, concept, quality, or idea. So in this case, we have some examples. We have words like time. We have money. We have travel. Also, we have ability. Then we have adoration, advantage, adventure, anger, anxiety. Beauty, belief, calm, care, chaos, childhood, clarity. Curiosity, divorce, dream, education, elegance, evil, sailor. Fear, section, freedom, friendship,
happiness, hate, hope, and the last one, horror. But uh, there are a lot of words that function as abstract nouns, and I will send to you right now the image that we have with the most common abstract noun, but in this case, we know that we have a lot of words uh, that function as abstract. So I'm going to send to the group the image. So let me send this one. It's kind of let's see. Okay, you have the image in the group in which you can see um kind of long list of abstract nouns because in that case we are talking about um emotion. Uh, the state of being, uh, the concept, the quality, or the idea. Así que tenemos esta lista de eh, nombres abstractos eh, que nos representan lo que son las emociones, los estados del ser, eh, los conceptos, la cantidad o las ideas o las cualidades. So we have like a list, a short list, but in the group you have a long list of words that you can use in the abstract nouns. Then uh, we we were saying that these quantifiers are used particularly with abstract nouns, and we have the list of uh, quantifiers that we can use to um, write with the non nouns, but with abstract nouns. And we have a great deal of And in Spanish, we can say una gran cantidad as de. Then we have a good deal of. And in Spanish, we can say una buena cantidad as de. And we have the example. We have here example number one. And it says, it will probably cost a great deal of money. And we have the second one, and it says, he spent a good deal of time watching TV. TV. Then we have members of group. It's almost at the end, so we are going to talk about the members of group. We are going to see what is this um, concept. Um, in which cases we are going to use the members of groups, because um, we are talking about uh, numbers. So we are going to see what is this specification. So it says members of group. And it says, we put a noun directly after a quantifier when we are talking about members of a group in general.
series case, en esta parte estamos hablando de un grupo en específico. Eh, no podemos mezclar los grupos, sino que tenemos que tener un solo grupo en mente eh, y ponemos un nombre directamente después del quantifier cuando estamos hablando de este eh, tipo de grupos en general. And we have some examples for this one. And it says, a few snakes are dangerous. So in this case, we are talking about snakes. That is the group that we are using to express um, these quantifiers. A few snakes are dangerous. Then we have another one and it says, most children like chocolate. So in this case, we are talking about children. That is the group that we are using for this expression. Then we have, I never have enough money. So in this case, obviously we are talking about money. That is the group that we are using for this one. But it says, in this case, that if we are talking about members or a, a specific group, we use of the. We are going to continue with the, this topic uh, tomorrow. And remember that uh, tomorrow is the last session for this course. So we are going to end the time of the quantifiers uh, tomorrow because it's time to end the session. And we are going to have this uh, ending tomorrow. So have a really good night. Um, and we are going to see each other tomorrow for the last session. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. See you. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Thank you. You're welcome.